Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's time for our morning inspiration. It's Friday in the third week of Advent. I'm Pastor Greg Chesluck from 4th Avenue United Methodist Church in Faribault. So glad that you've joined me this morning. Uh, we're getting excited for this upcoming weekend. A couple of special events that I want to make you aware of. Tomorrow night is Christmas in Faribault at 7 p.m. The premiere on YouTube and on public television. Christmas in Faribault is a virtual concert featuring musically talented people throughout our community celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I hope you'll tune in. You can uh, go search on, on YouTube, um, Christmas in Faribault 2020, Christmas in Faribault 2020, or turn to the local public uh, television station. And then on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., the fourth Sunday in Advent will be celebrated. Our worship celebration will be on public television and on YouTube. And you are going to be richly blessed by the efforts, the creative efforts of our children and our youth and many adults who stepped forward to provide leadership for this annual Christmas pageant event. <clears throat> While we can't do it in person, and we're sorry we can't do that, a lot of great creativity has been sparked. So I hope that you'll tune in on Sunday and pass the word that that is also happening. This morning's um, <clears throat> devotion is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. I'm going to read these words. Uh, in, the, in these days, as we near close to Christmas, we begin to contemplate the events uh, prior to Christmas. Matthew says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intentions when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived of her. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save you, save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Dreams. Dreams can be happy, scary, or strange, if we can remember them at all. Because dreams often don't make sense, it's no surprise that most of us don't take them very seriously, much less make major life decisions based on them. Yet that's exactly what Joseph did. Today's Gospel reading tells us about the first time this happened to Joseph. When an angel in a dream told him to take Mary as his wife, even though she was pregnant, with a child that was not his. Then after Jesus' birth, Joseph was told in a dream to flee to Egypt rather than return to Nazareth. This decision allowed the Holy Family to escape the detection of Herod, who was looking to kill the Christ child. There must have been something very unusual and convincing about Joseph's dreams for him to follow them. But still as powerful as those dreams were, he must have still had doubts. Was it crazy to think that they were really coming from God? Maybe people around him questioned his judgment. It would have been a leap of faith to take Mary as his wife and then later leave family and friends behind to start a new life in a foreign country. These choices took Joseph in directions that were completely 
unexpected and unplanned and maybe to an outside observer inexplicable but joseph trusted god he trusted god and the world is different because of it when you have a big decision to make you can trust god to help you just like joseph did look for the signs that God may put in your path. They may not be as obvious as a vivid dream, but he has other ways to reach us. Maybe through the counsel of a good friend, particularly a Christian friend, or a passage of scripture that tugs on your heart. And because scripture is such an important part of discerning God's will, it's important that we be in the word of God every single day so that we can allow God's word to be imprinted on our minds and shape our thoughts and, and be a vehicle through which God's spirit speaks to us and leads us in God's way. And if you read scripture and you pray and you receive counsel from friends and you still don't know what to do, then we can trust God to guide us along the, the path that we're supposed to take. And if you seek his guidance in prayer, and try your best to follow him and fulfill his commands, even if things don't work out, God will not condemn you. Even if things don't work out the way you planned, he'll continue to bless you. He'll teach you valuable lessons. He will, it will open the door for you to mature in your trust of him. He is faithful and loving. As we close this last week before Christmas, I'm going to invite you to pray for God's wisdom and guidance as to how you celebrate Christmas, how you relate to your family members, particularly in this project that we're doing with our Christmas community Christmas dinner re-envisioned. Re I want you to think about who you could bless at this Christmas season. Maybe even somebody, somebody in your neighborhood that, that you admire somebody in your life that you really, really love and appreciate, or maybe even a stranger whose work ethic is strong that you'd like to bless, maybe a checkout uh, cashier at, a, at the grocery store, or even a, a person for whom this year has been difficult, or maybe even a person with whom you've had a difficult year with them. Come to the church office on Tuesday of next week and Pick up one of our greeting cards, uh, a gift card from an area restaurant, and, and bless them. It's no charge. It, it, is the way, it is the church equipping you to spread the spirit of Christmas into our beloved community. Well, let's pray. <clears throat> Loving God, sometimes we just don't know which way to go. We don't know how you are leading us. But we are hardened, we are encouraged by the example of Joseph, who who, who was led in a dream to live in a way that his normal, reasonable way of thinking never would have come up with. But because he was faithful, because he was obedient to follow in your way, we have been blessed to receive Jesus Christ into our lives. So Lord, help us to seek you. Help us to turn to you in prayer. Help us to be faithful readers of your word. Help us to be tuning our hearts to you so that we can be obedient to your call and to know the blessing that comes in obedience. Especially, Lord, as we enter into this last week before Christmas, we humbly pray that your spirit would lead us to celebrate your birth aright and to imitate the heart of who, you're, who you are with those we relate to in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's great to be with you today. Have a great day.